Hi, I'm Dave Curtis. And I'm Blaine Bouvier. And together we're Vermont Modular. This afternoon we've come over to South Burlington and we're visiting with Fred Pete. Fred is one of Vermont's largest uh, real estate attorneys and we're going to talk to Fred about what, um, what you need to know as far as when to hire an attorney and what an attorney should do for you and so on. So, Fred? Well, good to see, see you. Yeah. Thank you for including me. You're very welcome. Well, um, the most important time to get an attorney involved with the transaction is before any of the contracts are signed, either the contract for the land uh, or the contract for the construction, um, because a lot of the financial aspects of the trans transaction are kind of set in stone upon the signing of the, of the agreements. So. Uh, the time to get the attorney involved is as you're negotiating the agreements with, uh, with either the home builder or the seller of, of the real estate. Well, um, there are a lot of very good attorneys uh, around, uh, but the are areas of law are becoming more and more specialized. Uh, for example, folks may know of good attorneys that handle their business transactions or handle a, a family uh, family law matter and so forth, but uh, but real estate is a, a specialized area of law. It's it's all that we do, and uh, we've seen folks on the other side of transactions actually hire their friend or their neighbor or their divorce attorney, and uh, and those attorneys, while they're very good at what they do, are not necessarily up to speed with real estate. So uh, they end up uh, paying a lot of money basically for that attorney to learn how to do real estate or to. Um, to get up to speed with, uh, you know, dealing with complicated uh, loan packages from lenders and so forth that they may not be used to dealing with. So the result is it's uh, less than perfect service at a higher cost. Uh, if there are a lot of very good real estate attorneys uh, in the area and, uh, and generally um, are very familiar with the, the changes in the law that have occurred in recent times and are very familiar with the, the complicated loan packages that the lenders send out, so they can. Uh, Help, uh, help the transaction go much more smoothly. Well, um, it, the, generally what I recommend for folks with a real estate transaction is to try and negotiate a, a set fee in advance uh, with your attorney. Most real estate attorneys will do that. So rather than uh, engaging an attorney by the hour, which you really have no control over how much it's finally going to be, if you can negotiate a set fee, that's that's a better way. And, and typically in the area here, um, for a, a purchase transaction, uh, generally $850 is a good uh, set fee. And I know that a lot of your um, clients are doing construction loans, and with construction loans, oftentimes there's more than one closing, because there's a, a construction loan closing and an end loan closing. So that might be slightly more, because there's another title update and another search that need to be completed. But Well, a uh, real estate attorney, um, first of all, um, helps review the contracts, uh, make sure that there are adequate contingencies and so forth, and everyone is, is protected and, and treated fairly. Um, and then the, the attorney would uh, go and do a title search on the, the real estate to make sure that, that the person who's selling the property has good marketable title, or if somebody already owns the land, the lender will still want a title search done uh, in order to uh, to give a mortgage on a property because uh, their interest is, is very similar and they want to see good title in the event that they have to foreclose. And then uh, if there are any issues that we discover with a title search, we'll work with the other attorney to, uh, to solve any title issues. So uh, even though we may find a problem, you know, we also, our goal is to make the transaction happen. So we'll work to solve any problems we discover as well. And then uh, it will come time for the closing that's uh, where everybody gathers to sign all the documents to formalize the transaction. And, and right here in this room. Right on the conference table, very similar to this. Yep. Know, <laughs> that um, <clears throat> The attorney will receive all the loan documents from the lender. They'll prepare the settlement statement. They'll put together all the documents and then um, go over them with you at the closing. Um, and oftentimes there's a good stack of documents like this that you, know, you can't even read it all in the time that you're given to sign them all. So. You know, it's, it's the time where you really need to count on your attorney that has 
you know, seen all of the language and know what they say to give you a good description of them before you sign them without forcing you to read it all. So, uh, so that's the basic role of the attorney is, is you know, the title search, the contract, and the closing. So. Yes, they are. So they're, they're kind of the roadmap as to what happens when things go wrong. I mean, if uh, things, for example, if um, we discover a title issue that uh, can't be solved in the title search, well, what happens then? Well, the purchase and sale agreement is the document that will spell out what happens. It gives typically the seller an opportunity to fix things, and if they're unable to fix it, you know, the, the buyer can then terminate the contract and get their deposit money back. Um, so things like that. You know, the contract is very important because um, it spells out what happens when uh, when things don't go perfectly and uh, and and can you know a properly drafted contract can remove the potential for a lot of dispute in the event that things aren't working perfectly because you know a lot of transactions there are there is a bump in the road and we get through it and the and the contract is kind of the roadmap to allow that to happen smoothly so we highly recommend that folks. Uh, Look at the contracts closely. They're one of the, they're probably the most important document that you sign in the whole transaction. So it's uh, important that you, know, you look at them closely. So. Well, a title search is where we go to the town or city land records to verify that uh, the owner of the land has good and marketable title with no bad encumbrances. So what we're going to do is uh, create a chain of title, we'll create a chain of every owner of the property back 40 years plus one good warranty deed prior to that, um, which meets the state's marketable title definition. And then once we have that chain of title, we'll look at each owner during the period of time they own the property to make sure they didn't improperly encumber it. So we'll look for things like um, judgment liens, um, you know, or if they convey out uh, interests that are harmful to the property, you know, potentially the rights of first refusal options, and you know, a whole host of things. Um, and you know, there can also be uh, uh, tax liens. The state of Vermont and the IRS, uh, if, if they're not paid, can assert a lien against the property. We're going to be looking for those things. We're going to be finding uh, kind of typical encumbrances like mortgages, which will get paid off out of the seller's proceeds. We'll look for things like. Uh, easements and rights of way. Um, you know, the property you buy may be subject to a utility easement to get the power to your property and to the next property. Well, it may burden your property, but also benefits your property too, and then you need to get power to your property as well as to the neighbor. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be looking for all of those types of things and preparing a report both for the lender and for the homeowner spelling out what their property is subject to and then alerting everybody if there are any, you know, uh, abnormal or, or harmful encumbrances that we find. And then uh, also in Vermont, uh, we have to deal with uh, permitting, so too, so we'll look at that a little closer as a part of the search. Well, at the closing, um, like I said, there's a big stack of documents that, that need to be signed. Um, <clears throat> it's it's the occasion where title to the property is passed to the buyer and that the mortgage um, funds are, are uh, given by the bank in exchange for granting uh, a mortgage in the property uh, to the bank. Uh, so typically what you'll see at the closing is a settlement statement, uh, which is the document that itemizes the financial part of the transaction. So all of the uh, cost of the transaction are uh, spelled out. And your attorney is going to take some time to go over that very closely so that um, there's a good understanding of what each of the charges are and there are no surprises. Um, and then there's going to be a deed which uh, conveys title uh, to the new homeowner. And, uh, and then the lender is going to require a promissory note to be signed where you promise to pay back a certain amount of money at a certain interest rate during a certain period of time. And that note's going to be secured by a mortgage which gives the bank the right to foreclose on the property in the event that you're in default on the note and that mortgage will be recorded in the land records. And then the lenders typically have a lot of other documents kind of supporting or ancillary documents that kind of go with all that that add to the stack quite a lot. <laughs> and the, um, we'll go over those fairly quickly. Um, they're pretty much standard documents that we see every day and, and we can explain them pretty clearly and quickly so folks can get through the stack of papers. Uh, so those are the, the the primary things that occur at the closing. So. 
It depends on the lender. <laughs> Some lenders will do a one-time uh, closed construction loan where um, the, the lo one loan will kind of come in two stages where there's a construction period where they'll make advances um, and then once the construction is done and, and the certificate of occupancy is in hand, then they'll convert the loan to an end loan, which uh, oftentimes will be like a modification, a couple of documents to sign that will convert it to the end loan based on what the final interest rate and terms are and so forth. Um, but then some lenders, uh, and probably the majority of lenders, do it the other way. There's actually two different loans, two different transactions. So you'll have a, a loan specially for the construction period of time, which will make the advances and draws as you need to pay the contractors. And then um, um, it's usually at a higher rate and it's for a short term and so forth. But then once everything is done, then essentially you refinance. So there's like a refinance transaction that occurs after the construction is done where uh, there's a new end loan that will go for, you know, like a normal mortgage at that point going forward. So. Is that uh, all rolled back into that same fee, the, 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 well, the, the, the blanket fee? It depends a little bit. That's why I was bringing that up earlier. In the event that there's a two-time closing, there'll be another charge for an additional closing because really doing the closing twice. Uh, and the lender is also going to require that the title be updated um, after the construction is done. So it'll be a construction or it'll be a, an update from when our last title search left off and then there'll be an additional closing. So there'll be a, somewhat of an additional fee at that point, but it's, uh, but it's not as much. Mm -hmm. Well, title insurance uh, protects uh, people from um, things that are wrong with title to the property. Um, if we do a perfect title search, there can still be um, problems with title that we can't discover uh, doing the search. Uh, there can be forged documents. There have been several cases right here in Vermont even where uh, people have forged mortgage discharges or other documents that, you know, that means that that mortgage still exists even though there's a forged discharge of record. Or, or um, we had a, a case, not in our office, but uh, a firm locally where the um, the husband, rather than bringing the wife, brought the girlfriend to the closing, and the girlfriend was signing the wife's name on everything. So, <laughs> you know, things like that we can't discover doing a title search. Uh, and there are a lot of other things that can't be discovered even doing a perfect title search. So, lenders uh, require a title insurance policy with every transaction, uh, guaranteeing to the lender that in the event they foreclose, there's good title. And the borrowers are required to pay that cost. And then, for a, a, a slight additional premium, you can also get an owner's policy, which protects the owner of the property against those same risks. And, uh, and we generally highly recommend uh, title insurance. It's solved a lot of issues for a lot of people, and uh, it's, it's a pretty affordable um, price to pay, given the amount of you have at stake with the property. And, and title insurance, unlike other types of insurance, you only pay it once. You pay it at the time you buy the property. There's no reoccurring premium that needs to be paid. And then the policy, the owner policy then is good forever. So as long as you own the property, and even after you sell it, you're promising to the new owner that you had good title. And uh, if it turns out you didn't, you can still go back against your title insurance policy. Well, after the closing, uh, the attorney still, I mean, you go off and move into your nice new house, but the attorney still has some work to do. Uh, at that, after the closing, we're going to send all the documents uh, to the town or city land records um, to record. Um, that way you become the owner of record and then uh, oftentimes at the closing we're paying off the prior owners and mortgages. So uh, we're going to coordinate that and then several uh, months after the closing we go actually back to the land records to do the uh, update at that point because we want to make sure that the clerk properly received and recorded the deed and make sure it confirmed that it actually made it there and get recorded and indexed properly. And then we're also going to check to make sure that all those old mortgages or anything else that we paid off at the closing has actually been released because we uh, spend a lot of time uh, chasing down uh, out-of-state mortgage companies who fail to discharge the mortgage that's already been paid off. So we uh, will follow up with that to make sure that uh, when you go to sell or refinance again in the future, that these uh, issues don't linger. So, mm -hmm. so we do have a role after the closing as well.